Survival of the fittest. For millions of years, organisms have competed against each other to grow and produce the next generation. But what kinds of competition are there? And why is it so important to our ecosystems? Let's find out. There are many ways for species to interact. Sometimes both of them benefit. Sometimes only one species benefits. And sometimes one individual struggles at the expense of another. But in competition, species negatively affect each other while they fight for resources, like air, food, water, and space. Competition can be divided into multiple categories. If two different species compete for resources, we call that interspecific competition. If two individuals who belong to the same species compete, we call that intraspecific competition. There are also different ways to compete for resources. Exploitation competition occurs when competitors use up each other's resources. For example, after squirrels find acorns and nuts, they bury their food to prevent other squirrels from stealing it. Interference competition happens when individuals physically exclude their competitors from resources, increasing their own chances at survival and reproductive success. Through patrolling and scent marking, lions in a pride mark their territory to prevent other predators from gaining access to their prey. Of course, every species is different. They all have their own roles in an ecosystem, and they all interact with their environment and resources in unique ways. These roles are what we call niches. But what do niches have to do with competition? According to a man named Gauss, assuming that you have two species in a stable environment, if they use the same resource in the same way, they will not both be able to exist indefinitely. One of them will outcompete the other. But as long as species use the resources in different ways, they are able to coexist and maintain the diversity that we see all around us. This is called resource partitioning. Lizards in the Caribbean are able to coexist by living in different microhabitats. Some lizards consume insects in the canopies of trees, while others capture their prey along the trunks. But what happens if competition is too extreme? When an animal gains too much of a competitive advantage or no competition exists at all? During the early 20th century, people eliminated wolves from the ecosystem of Yellowstone National Park. Deer and elk populations subsequently exploded. These species were excellent grazers, so good in fact, that they completely changed the ecosystem in Yellowstone. As their populations grew, vegetation levels significantly declined, plant biodiversity dwindled, and riverbanks eroded. The lack of regulation of deer and elk populations stemmed from the loss of competition among their predators. Subsequently, resources in the ecosystem decreased. Eventually, wolf populations were reintroduced to Yellowstone in the 90s. With the return of a natural predator, deer and elk populations were moderated, and vegetative biodiversity could regain its footing. So what's the takeaway? Competition is a powerful ecological force. From the skies above to the depths of the ocean, competition drives species diversity and ecosystem health. But human activities like overhunting and forest clearing can disturb this process. As we face growing ecological challenges, we should remain mindful of the competitive interactions that benefit our planet every day.